What have you got for me? Well, tra the training was delayed. Was the meeting longer for any particular reason? Yeah, there was, a, there was a couple of practical jokes played in the team meeting, so I uh, apologise for the lateness. <laughs> there wasn't a potential debutante <coughs> at all? Sorry? Was there a potential debutante at all? No. No, no not in that meeting. There might be a potential debutante, but there wasn't any, right. any part of the team meeting, though. No. Wasn't you playing practical jokes? I like to get involved as much as I possibly can, but uh, I had a small part to play. Um, but uh, nothing that you, were, you guys want to hear about. Uh, <laughs> Any update on Scotty Lawson? <clears throat> I think Scott's a good chance to, to play. Obviously, um, you know, who have we got out there that uh, you'd be interested in? Scott, Ryan Burton, uh, Brad Ebert's going to miss, as I think Ken has, has said previously. Um, I think Trent McKenzie's going to be good to go from an SNFL perspective. Um, he, uh, he put up uh, early in the game, but uh, I think he's going to be available. Um, so uh, I think that's about it, isn't it? And Sam Gray's in recovery out there in the last Yeah, it's just, a, just a yeah, modified part of training. Obviously, the guys you'll see from time to time, you know, some of the guys are in for full training, some um, don't train twice a week. So uh, he's under no, no cloud. So even though Scott is in that very light group at the moment, he's still a good chance to play? Yeah, I mean, he's got to get through what the guys, the fitness staff want to get him through today, but, uh, you know, uh, for all intents and purposes, if he does, he's he's available for selection. Is that and a yes on that? There, so he's in the main group. He was like listed as two to three on your report, I think, yeah. on our Tuesday. Yeah, uh, he's, uh, he's come up pretty well right now. Um, you know, you know our fitness staff tend to be as aggressive as we possibly can. Um, you know, we think uh, we think right now, if he gets through today, he's a he's a good chance of being available again. So, uh, you know, we've got to weigh that up with the benefits of of uh, of uh, Ryan playing, but at the same time, you know, right now he's he's looking like he's going to be available, which is a great thing. Just for the sake of going through absolutely everyone, Robbie and <coughs> Jonas, they both look okay. Yeah, so so we expect both of those guys to to be available. Um, Rob, uh, you know, has has got over his hand issue. Um, yeah, he's, he's been battling for a little bit from a body perspective, but we think the time that he's had off will, will uh, probably serve him well. So he's, he's available and, uh, and we think that Tom is going to be fine as well. So you know, good news from an injury perspective you know, coming into the, the middle of the year. You now Charlie's out there, you would have seen a big fella <coughs> running about, which is, a, which is a great thing for the group as well. What's this? Well, it sounds like an influx perhaps in the next couple of weeks of players do do to the team that's been, uh, you know, had a lot of new faces in it recently. What does yeah. this do to that? Oh, it's, it's great. It's sorry, the other one I meant, should have mentioned was, was Hamish is you know, uh, up and about as well. So uh, it's, it's fantastic to, to have these guys coming back. Obviously, we knew that uh, around the uh, the China game and, and the mid-season break was going to be when a lot of these guys were going to be available. You know, we're, we're keen to have them back as soon as we can. So. Um, you know, we're not going to hold them out if they don't need to be held out. If, if uh, someone's available now, then, then uh, we'll push them for selection this week. It's obviously a, a really big game for us down in Tasmania this week. Seti, how do you approach the mid-season draft, mate? Uh, with, an, with an open mind at the moment. So we've got a spot available. Um, yeah, Jake Patmore has, uh, has been placed on the, <coughs> the injury list for the year. So we've got a, a spot. You know, our, our recruiting guys are still working through. Uh, whether we want to have a selection or not, obviously we've got to weigh that up with the number of players that we've got coming back. You know, we have had a significant injury list, and so we were mindful for a while there of having enough you know, bodies available. Um, yeah, that seems to be something that we can take off the table. But you know, we also want to make sure that we position ourselves as well as we can for a, a, at AFL level. What's your philosophy on the? You know, there might be a few 18, 19 year olds who just missed out on the draft. What's your philosophy on picking up one of those kids now instead of waiting until October? Well, I think that'll be the balance for the teams who are considering their selections. Um, excuse me. We'll, we'll take into account the the idea of taking a you know a young player, um, but at the same time, yeah, we, we'll also contemplate if there's someone that, someone that we can believe can um, yeah, help us out right now. Um, I think across the uh, the competition, there'll be probably more younger players taken, um, but that'll be an interesting thing to see. You know, it's a new part of the uh, the competition, isn't it? The mid-season draft. Do you think that's? <coughs> I don't know. This probably is the quiet word for it, but it, it, the, the right word for it. But is that club sort of exploiting the mid-season draft? Obviously, the purpose of it was, you know, you need to top up on injured players, and you might need to fill a certain role. Is that 
a side effect of the way that the rules have come in, do you think? I think, I think clubs are going to look to exploit whatever rule is there. Um, it doesn't matter if they're rule changes to the actual game or, or changes mm. to drafts. Um, the clubs are going to do whatever they think is in their best interest at the time and that's, that's what our responsibility is. So, uh, you know, as I say, I think that there'll be a balance taken. There'll be some who, some clubs who think that they might have a player that uh, yeah, can come in and help right away. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how it unfolds on Monday night. I'm not even sure how many teams actually have you know, the option to select, but uh, yeah, it'll be fascinating to see. It's something else that'll be interesting. Realistically, do you have a number that you're whittling it down? Do you have like six guys that you could take? Like one, you your eye on six guys or ten guys or a dozen? Or? Well, it'll, it'll also depend on the, you know, the weekend if we get any injuries. Um, yeah, right now, we, as I say, we've got a spot available. So our, uh, we've mentioned to the AFL that you know, we want to make sure our options are open until the last possible minute that, that they need to be. So, um, yeah, we think our list is pretty balanced. And as I said, we've got some guys that are coming back. So... Uh, injury is not necessarily going to be our number one um, concern, but you know, at the same time, we also want to make sure that we uh, give as many players an opportunity to actually play. And if we think that there's someone that can help us or potentially help us, then then we'll look at it. Chris, could you put Watts, make a call on Watts' <coughs> season before Monday, right? Whether yeah, we, we won't do that. So, uh, so right now, we want to make sure that Jack is given as much time as he possibly can to to potentially get back. You know, it's. Um, yeah, you know, I think right now it's probably looking more unlikely than likely, but at the same time, um, we won't be making that call right now. And, and as you've seen over the last couple of weeks, things can change pretty quick. You know, uh, yeah, you know, we were we weren't deliberately elusive with Charlie's situation. The reality is, is that you know he took two steps forward and one step back constantly. You know, from his um, rehab. You're hardly so. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, as I say, these things can change pretty quick. So. Um, um, we want to keep our options open for as long as we can. Obviously, Sample clubs are really unhappy about the mid-season draft, rightly or wrongly. Would that influence your decision whether you would take a player from the Sample or look at alternative options, or that, or you would just take the best available player? Look, I'm, I, I understand um, the SNFL club's position and then the SNFL's position on this. It's it's obviously a way up for us when you consider we, we're existing in a in a national competition, and our responsibility is to make sure that um, we're competing at that level first and foremostly. Um, you know, I, I think, will it come into our consideration? Yes, it will, but at the same time, you know, it won't dictate who we end up taking um, if we actually have a selection on Monday night. The <coughs> China trip's not far away. The, what have you sort of, are there things that you've looked out of the way you've gone the first two years and very noticeable changes to the way you go about it this year from a yeah. football perspective? No, no, I mean, we've been pretty comfortable with the way that we've got about it. Obviously, from a players and coaches perspective, my role is to make sure in the short term they, they don't take their focus off this weekend. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll tend to travel in the same sort of ways that, that we've done previously, obviously playing on the, the Sunday rather than the Saturday mm. um, previously as, as uh, you know, thrown some times, you know, a day earlier, um, but uh, on the most part, <coughs> excuse me, on the most part, we'll uh, uh, we'll travel in the same way that we have previously. Do you know, train twice when we're over there. Um, you know, there's a couple of little things that the, the guys will do, you know, away from footy that will give them an opportunity to, to get access to. Um, but uh, you know, I, th I think we've been pretty happy with the way that we've gone about it the first two years. Is the club happy that the game's later in the season <coughs> and the bye will coincide with most of the other teams? Yeah, cer certainly. Um, you know, we don't think it was a big issue, but at the same time, it's you know it's another issue that's off the table with um, with going over there. So you know, the guys will have um, you know their their break on the back of the game. You know, some will, will stay over and, and spend a few more days in in. Uh, you know, a couple of different spots you know over there and, and some will want to get home to their families um, in their home ports here but uh, we'll be back to training late the following week and, and ready to hit the second half of the season you know we've uh, uh, we've got two important games obviously before the break um, but obviously the second half of the season is where we can really get motoring is the club getting what they designed out of the china <coughs> sort of four i mean three years is a third year now you're getting what you wanted I mean, look, for, from a footy perspective, we've obviously won, we're two from two. So, uh, 
uh, we're getting what we want from that standpoint. I mean, I'll let others you know, in the club talk about uh, and others' best place to, to talk about um, what we're getting, but I think uh, you know, the, the club is committed to it. You know, we're, we're making uh, as many poster winners as we possibly can over there, and uh, it's obviously got a long term future, which is fantastic. In previous years, you've know, taken food over, I, I think, in, in some, you know, some of the stuff there. Have you seen a similar situation this time around? Yeah, yeah well, so um, our, our dietitian, Emily Hartley, you know, has sorted all of that. Um, yeah, we, we've got it down to a you know, a bit of a fine art travelling over there now. It's obviously you know, two years worth of experience doing it. Um, you know, I can't see it's going to pose too many problems for us. Obviously, it's a, it's a longer flight, but you know, the guys are going to cope with that. And St Kilda have got to go through the same thing. So uh, um, there'll be no excuses when we get over there. We've, we've got to, got it as good as we possibly can. Is the same situation with guys and players not to sort of eat? Outside of the team hotel, and to oh yeah, I mean that's like that. that's normal anyway. The guys don't eat outside of the hotel generally when we go to Melbourne, mate. So uh, that's not that big of an issue for us. Um, yeah, we we try and control as much as we possibly can, but um, but the food that they eat when we go away is is uh, standard type stuff that uh, the guys get in the in the hotels generally. Obviously, the competition committee met Melbourne yesterday. You were part of that. What was I was a lot of talk out of that. It's been about the wild card round. Do you think that would be a beneficial thing if that was to come in? Well, something that the AFL are looking at. Um, yeah, my, um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly interested in all of the, the ways that uh, the AFL are looking at, um, you know, filling times in the calendar. Um, uh, you know, the wild card stuff, as I say, is is interesting for that first week of the finals. It's got to be weighed up with, um, you know, does it uh, does it help the teams that are down the bottom of the eight? You know, having to play an extra week, that was you know, part of the conversation, but um, I'm sure the AFL will, will continue to look at you know, the options for its final series into the future. You know, I think, first and foremostly, though, that the AFL would acknowledge that uh, the final series over the last few years have been cracking with that extra week you know, off for the, for the teams who are um, you know, potentially needing to, to get some rest. Chris Gillan has spoken to that <coughs> in the middle of a mid-season trade period. Yep. Um, I'm not sure whether it's against the continue with both the rookie draft and the trade or just that one or the other. What's your preference? I think the, the AFL are going to continue to look at ways that players can move within the competition and it's you know, I keep saying that it's it's got to be looked at in, in totality. You, you can't just uh, implement something mid-year and not consider the way that that's going to have ramifications on the other ways that players can move within the comp. Um, but I think it's it's a natural thing to look at. Most sports right now have a have a, a window in the mid, middle of the season where players can change clubs. Um, whether that's a good thing for for our competition or not is something that you know the the AFL and the people who are making rules around it are going to have to continually look at. But um, you know, I don't think we should look at it as something that's totally foreign in uh, in the world of sport. Is, um, it, is that instead of, last couple of, the, of the rookie <coughs> draft or to complement it that by? Well, I think, as I say, you've got you've got to look at it in totality. So it's not just it wouldn't just be about if you were going to make changes to to uh, you know a mid season trade period, you wouldn't just look at it as as distinct from a mid season draft. You'd be looking at the ways that players get onto the lists across the the whole board. So uh, that's something that, as I say, I'm I'm really keen on. Obviously, I've got a, a players association background, so I I understand that. Um, you know, it's, it's important to look at these things in totality rather than just, you know, it's either this or that. Um, at that point in time, it's about the way the players get onto the list, you know, across the board, not just at the midpoint or at the start of the year. You've, you've got to really, you know, contemplate what, uh, um, you know, consequences it's going to have, have for the way that um, the guys get on the list overall. So we're going to do it during a whole season, any stage during a season? Well, no, it would be, yeah. no, no, what, what I'm yeah, saying is if, yeah. if you're going to implement a mid-season trade period, yeah. then, then that's, it shouldn't just be um, uh, in place of a mid-season draft. Sure. You've actually got to look right. at the way that then players get on the list at the, the start of the year, you know, the, the uh, pre-season stuff that the, the AFL has brought in this year, the ability to, to you know, keep list spots open. Um, you know, it's got to be looked at you know, as, a, as a whole package rather than just um, you know, one part um, uh, you know, consistently. How concerned is the club about Brad Ebert, obviously, <coughs> after the buy that you made that call publicly? Um, how concerned about no, it? No, I mean, not, not concerned at all. Brad's had some, yeah, some good news yeah, with yeah. Uh, some of the stuff that he's, uh, the testing that he's had. So, um, you know, I, I expect, as I say, Brad to, 
uh, to be available after the, the mid part, but it's I think it's um, you know what you're seeing is is a way that clubs will handle um, concussion or, or symptoms of head knocks you know into the future. Um, you know I, I think it's the reality of where the, the game's at. I think uh, it's something that you'll see more of. I, I can't imagine that we're going to be the last club who who takes a conservative approach to to um, you know a player coming back. Yeah, oh, can we just ask one more? Sorry, CD. Uh, on player contracts, a lot of people, you know, love re-signing their young boys. The three draftees, are you pursuing that now? Waiting on that? Where, where does where's that at? Um, we'll we'll move over the next period of time. Um, you know, I expect that uh, that uh, if you're talking about the, the three guys that we picked up early in the draft, that you know, I, I can't imagine that uh, that uh, right now any of those guys is going to necessarily be a problem re-signing. Um, yeah, they're, they're playing good footy, they're getting an opportunity. I, I can't imagine they would want any more from the club that they've gone to. So yeah, I would expect that before, <coughs> excuse me guys, uh, before the end of the year that, um, that we would have something sorted out there.